so on the first day, you guys remember we came in and uh, we went ahead and prepped our tub area walls with the uh, the weedy half inch boards. Went ahead and sealed up everything, bottom corners and all the fasteners. Um, on that same day, we came in and uh, we went ahead and prepped our bathroom floor. Um, we uh, we strung the new heat wire for the heated electric radiant heat. We also primed the, the plywood uh, substrate and then we poured our Ardex LBB um, leveler over top of it, screeded the floor, did everything that we needed to do as far as getting those two prepped. Um, second day we came back and we sealed up all the tile and uh, installed the um, terra glazed terracotta 4x4 handmade tile on the floor. Got the pattern down, uh, did our layouts and got all that installed with the Artex X77. Now on the third day, obviously you see we're in here, got the layout, uh, got everything going on. Uh, I use a laser in this situation. I also use a level, but in the, it, with a laser, uh, it self levels for me, um, then I don't have to get my le my level all dirty into the thin set. Um, so I go ahead and, and, and do that. Um, one of the things that I did in this is just make sure that everything was laid out, make sure that everything is nice and clean and flat on the walls, check the corners, check the tub, check the ceiling, check all these different things and uh, do a, do a layout. You know, I'll, I'll walk the tile out from here to here to figure out what cut I'm going to have on these opposing walls and from full tile to this tile. Um, in this shower area, obviously, you see we have a 2x9, a handmade glaze, uh, crackle glaze finish uh, ceramic tile. Above it, we will have the white crackle finish. It's another handmade material, um, crackle finish tile. We did go ahead and seal both of these uh, tiles with two coats of uh, our Ocean Care sealer, penetrating sealer. One thing I will show you is the variation in these tiles. I mean, you can you can pick them up and, and turn them around and you can see daylight in some parts of it. Uh, the corners aren't always gonna be square, um, you know, so you, you've got a little bit of that going on. We won't be butting these tiles together. We actually are gonna give them um, about a 16th of an inch. It's gonna vary because some of the tiles aren't exactly square. So um, we're gonna go ahead and do that. I've, I'll use horseshoe shims here and I'll use a wedge, just a regular wedge, so I can make sure that all my lines, even though the tiles are inconsistent in size, I can make sure that my lines are nice and straight as possible. Um, so those are a couple little things that we're gonna use on this one and how we're gonna do it. Um, and that's gonna be what we get done today. So we should have this whole tub area installed today um, and then uh, the next day we'll come back and we'll clean everything really well. We'll go ahead and put another coat of sealer on it and then we can go ahead and grout and address all our soft joints with 100% silicone. This job will be 100% done. All right, so I have a question for, for our viewers. Mm -hmm. uh, as you guys saw, in the previous, uh, actually was the first day when we prepped the uh, top enclosure. He actually embedded those weedy boards into a thin set. There's a specific, uh, or there's a reason for that, or yeah, there's a there's a really good reason for that. And and walking into this project, I knew that nothing was typical in this situation. Um, Ninety nine point nine percent of the time when when I'm installing weedy board. Uh, on in a, in a tub area or you know and on any wall uh, I have access to the studs um, So my weedy board is directly up against the 2x4 or 2x6 whatever the framing is in this situation This house was built in the late 1800s early 1900s. It's a row home uh, There is the next-door neighbor This is the wall that separates the next-door neighbor's home and their tub is directly behind here so for sound the general contractor went ahead and insulated that wall for sound deadening. He also had to, for code, he also had to put up a 5 h fire rating board. Therefore, he already covered up the studs, okay? So what we did was, um, I didn't want to just go ahead and fasten the boards up on, on to, over top of the 5 h uh, sheetrock. 
what I didn't want, if I did it that way, what I would have had is basically a hollow area or a room for deflection, meaning bouncing uh, anywhere in between where the fasteners are. So what I did is I went ahead and wiped the wall down. You saw I went ahead and hydrated the walls, got, got it free of contaminants, and then set it my boards on. Therefore, in the areas where there are no fasteners, in between those areas, uh, it is bonded directly to there. So we have 100% bond uh, to the other substrate. On these two opposing walls, since this wall was already built out, we went ahead and I did the same thing on these walls. So there's sheetrock behind these walls. And what that did was allow me to get rid of uh, all the old yellowing or, or, or you know, not clean glaze. This is a very old tub, but it's in great condition. Um, so what it did was allow me to do that. And, and so that everything now coming forward looks nice and fresh. It didn't throw me out because the, this tub has such a huge ledge on it. Um, you would never even know it. And at the same time, we went ahead and bonded that so that we now have a nice strong substrate to uh, go ahead and adhere our tile. Um, we're adhering the tile on these walls right now with uh, Ardex X77. Um, just the same thin set we used on the floor, which is an awesome thin set. Uh, it has a great pot life, great strength. It's indoor, outdoor, non-sag. So it's, a, it, it's one, of, one of my favorite thin sets out there. Um, so that's what we did on that day and uh, today we're going to get these walls up and uh, move on. Awesome. So stay tuned guys.
Okay guys, so in this shower with this uh, handmade tile, um, it's a couple things that we didn't have control over. Um, one is the layout. Um, I had certain things that I was able to do as far as laying out from left to right and how we start. But as far as the bottom, I had no control over that. The homeowner actually chose to use this color tile, this, this yellow kind of color, uh, mustard, uh, up against the tub because what she was afraid was that the field tile uh, didn't match that well to the color of the tub and it bothered her. So that was why we incorporated this yellow tile, which was her decision on uh, going up against the tub to kind of, you know, trick the eye and not make it so noticeable. All right. So since that was predetermined before I even arrived on the scene as far as this being down here, um, I was limited as far as my layout um, from this piece here to the ceiling. That was out of my control. Um, Ideally, I, I, you always want to have a really nice size piece at your ceiling, at your side walls, um, so you can go ahead and balance things that way. You can go to center line out or go to center of the tile uh, on center. So those, those are the things that when, we, when I have controlled the ultimate situation. This situation, um, we ended up with a not so desirable piece. I mean, it's not the worst. Um, but being that this house was built in the late 1800s, early 1900s, I didn't have any control of that. And especially with the layout uh, going from, from tub to the ceiling. I had no, no control over that. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, well, why did you cut down this piece to here? Well, I would never be able to replicate the factory edge if it were a stone i could replicate the factory edge i can't replicate this edge i i, I don't have those uh you know i don't have the capabilities of doing that work because that's done in a factory um, under factory conditions and then the glaze would be gone and then you have an exposed edge on the tile and we don't want that because this tile is very water absorbent um, and that was one of the reasons why we sealed it so I had no other choice but to start with a full tile here. Danny and I, we went over different layouts and different different scenarios, and it had not been for this piece here, I would have been able to cut this bottom row down and slam it on the tub and achieve a bigger cut up there. So I want you to be aware that um, there are things that are within our control to, to uh, a, a remedy, and then there are certain situations that they're out of our control. I cannot raise the ceiling i cannot lower the ceiling in here because it's not what the homeowner is, is is asking for and it's not an option so it is my job to do the best i can with the situation that's handed and handed to me um to my best ability and with all the knowledge that i have and experience that i have is to make it the best situation as possible um so i wanted to explain that to you before we go ahead and release it and then there are questions um, as to why is that done that way and now you know I had no other option so we chose the best route possible for this situation under these uh, uh, under these these uh, conditions so uh, that's it I mean you can see how irregular and different in sizing these materials are and that's the look of it uh, but what you will notice is once we're done these tiles are nice and flat we've got a hundred percent bond um, going on and uh, you know, everything is coming out good uh, with this material. And I'm gonna go ahead and finish cutting in those tiles up to the ceiling, um, cutting them in really nice and tight. Uh, what we do here in this situation is uh, every two rows, I go ahead and level off and uh, get this all nice and tight. Um, and that's gonna be it. I got two corner shelves going over here. Uh, the blue tile represents the tiles that I have to take out. I actually set those so that I can continue all the way up. And um, next wall is going to be the uh, shower wall with all the cuts in it. And I'm going to go have fun with that. Another thing that was, uh, I, I believe Danny wanted to talk about was the, um, the shower head. How it is not centered with the diverter in the tub spout. Um, from my knowledge and my understanding, that is something that the homeowner requested. Um, I... 
have no control over that either. That's where she wanted it. That's where she told the plumber to put it. So that is a decision that she made, uh, not me. Um, so just, you know, just for your own um, uh, knowledge that I ju I'm just doing the tile <laughs> and, uh, and what's necessary to get my, my job done here. I have no control over electrical, plumbing, framing, or anything else like that. Um, so let me get back to work so I can go ahead and get this one done and uh, you guys can uh, check it out once it's all complete. Beautiful.